Moves of God and Church Multiplication, A Short History. This is Tim Rail. Leonard Sweet, in his wonderful book, Eleven Genetic Gateways to Spiritual Awakening, gave us a tremendous synopsis of the keys to the expansion of the Methodist Church in the 1700s in the United States. He also gave me a paradigm that I often use to see how God is at work in people and organizations' lives. Here it is. Focus. What gets time, attention, energy, resources? Heroes. Who are those that are emulated, who have influence, who lead the way, whether they have position or not? Permission. Is it limited to a written down document like a church discipline? Or is it within the, the wonderful boundaries of the Holy Spirit, whatever is legal and whatever is biblical is permissible in order to accomplish the great work of God? Focus, hero's permission equals destiny. You'll find this very useful as you look at your own life, others, and other organizations. So as we look at church history, we go back to the beginning. Jesus won the victory for us, dying on the cross, raising from the dead, uh, before he ascended back to the Father where he sits at the right hand of God Almighty. He gave us a commission, a co-mission that we have with him. He said, all authority is given unto me. Therefore, as you go, make disciples, teaching them to obey, baptizing them. And don't forget, I'll be with you to the end of the age. And that's exactly what happened. You can see the spread, especially with the yellow areas, of how the good news of Jesus resulted in multitudes of new disciples and churches. It wasn't until Christianity became the official religion of Rome that things began to change. They got organized, politicized, and when those kind of things begin to happen, moves of God become stifled. Now, Christianity multiplies during new moves of God, and it's always a word-of-mouth, work-of-the-spirit, supernatural thing. Well, let's look at some of those, new, those moves of God throughout history. I mentioned Pentecost to becoming the official religion of Rome, and unfortunately, there was a long period of, of darkness during, during a season. But in the 1500s, the Reformation arrived with Martin Luther, happy 500th birthday Reformation, where he reminded us from the scriptures that Christ alone, grace alone, faith alone provide the essence of foundation. By grace are you saved through faith. This is not of yourselves, it's a gift of God. And then in the 1700s, we saw the Wesleyan revival where God gave John Wesley and his, his wonderful band of Methodists the good news of heart holiness, that God could change us from the inside out, that the spirit-filled life of abundance and joy and spiritual power was available for all people. Not only could we be forgiven, but we could be transformed from the inside out. In the 1700s, we saw the beginning of Protestant missions, where men like William Carey went against conventional, conventional wisdom and conventional permission and began to reach out to nations where nobody had gone before to bring, because everybody needed to know the good news of Jesus. In the United States in the late 1700s, as I mentioned earlier, uh, there were with the Leonard Sweet's books, there were more Methodist churches at one point than there were post offices. That's saturation. That's a move of God. The Baptist during those days sang a song, we're planting a church a day, we're planting a church today, and believing God for more. So it was a tremendous time of multiplication across the, the United States. Unfortunately, by the 1800s, focus, heroes, and permission had changed, and things began to level off and then to decline. Now, in the United States, among a particular people group, especially one that I'm grateful for because it's part of my heritage, three quarters of the German immigrants that came to the United States were evangelized by their brothers and sisters here. That is a move of God among a people group. In the 1800s and 1900s, the modern mission movements began to emerge as uh, ministries of denominations and independent uh, mission agencies throughout the world of tremendous time. In the early 1900s, we saw the Pentecostal movement that gave us a tremendous emphasis on worship, warfare, and wonders. And so it continues to date. And then as well, with multitudes of people coming to Christ, new churches uh, planted. In these days, in the late 1900s and early 2000s, CPMs, church planting movements, and DMMs, disciple-making movements, are springing up worldwide. We live in an amazing time in history as the center of Christianity has moved from the west and the north, 
where uh, most, especially in the United States, to the south and the east, we see God at work. One of the most amazing things is what's happening among Muslim people in these days. As you look at this history of movements to Christ throughout the centuries, you can see there is hardly any through the 20th century, but late in the 20th century, we saw a spike to 11, and since the beginning of this century, 69 new movements among Muslims. God is working in powerful ways. As we look, you can see that all across the Muslim movement today, the Muslim world, that church planting movements, disciple making movements are emerging in powerful ways. And so we can say, God is at, is at work, God is moving. In our class, we're going to look at three main church multiplication methods that are able to be identified and studied today. First is disciple multiplication movements, uh, disciple making movements, and church multiplication or church planting movements. We'll look at them in depth. Secondly, we'll look at denominational efforts as denominations are retooling in order to focus on the Great Commission and the Great Commandment and once again recapture some of what had happened in the earliest days. And then we'll look at a more recent occurrence as large churches are beginning to plant their own churches, send out their own missionaries. Large churches are beginning to band together in networks not by geographic or denomination or even theological affinity, but affinity in uh, the heart that they have to work together to reach lost people and plant churches. This is going to be a fun time to study these ways God at work. And so we can say, God is moving. And we can say with Habakkuk, look to the nations, watch, and be utterly amazed. For I am going to do something in your days that you would not believe even if you were told. Well, we're going to have the opportunity to have some of this told to us. We'll study it. We'll begin to practice the essential principles and practical steps of becoming disciple makers. And who knows what God might have in store for us because we get to be a part of what God is doing today. Let's join him.